Hey, what's good, fam? Hey, you guys hungry for some serious cooking inspiration? Then you guys gotta check out the Grilling TV Network. We got some of the hottest chefs in the game, and guess what? They bringing their A-game to you and your kitchen. First up, we got the one and only Aaron McCargo Jr. He's fixing to show y'all how to make his famous crab stuffed salmon, y'all. Now, if you're looking for some Southern flavor, you gotta check out Chef Lorius. Her shrimp and grits is straight fire. It's got all the right spices and ingredients to make you feel like you're down south, kicking it with your fam. And my man Chef Kenneth Temple knows how to bring the heat with his Cajun pasta. It's got the perfect blend of spice and flavor that'll have you coming back for more. Trust me. You want to know how to cut up a chicken, boil the perfect egg, or make some fluffy scrambled eggs? We've got y'all covered. So tune in to the Grilling TV Network today and start making some magic in the kitchen, y'all. I'm not going to over talk it. You know it's going to be fire, and I wouldn't steer you wrong. Guess what, folks? I'm out. Peace. Today, we're making chicken enchiladas, and guess what, folks? We're going to do it the American way. Okay, so look, you guys just seen all of the ingredients, you know what I mean? There's not a whole lot to it, it's up to you. As you can see, I went ahead and put a chicken on. I actually had some more, that was the last one to come off. Uh, this right here, you know, I went ahead and smoked it with my pellet grill, right? You guys can use one from the market, you can make your own, you can do oven chicken, however you want to do it, right? And to be honest with you, any type of protein, you can just do it that way. You know, just stuff it however you want to do it. Now, now would be a great time to go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now that we got our, you know, our oven preheated, you know what I mean? Oh, let me go ahead and address this part. Listen, if you're new to my channel, I gotta say this. Listen, the full ingredient list is down in the bottom of this video in the description box, right? I keep the ingredient list right there. Now, with that being said, this is gonna be like super fast, super easy to make. We finna make this enchilada sauce, right? Okay, so look, now we're ready to make this uh, enchilada sauce, right? Now, I'm gonna say this, it's almost like a dump and go, but there's a little bit of an order to it, right? It goes like this. Listen, we're gonna start with our oil, but before we put that in here, I just wanna show you. You wanna get a medium flame, right? That's where we're gonna start at. We're gonna do oil. Now, those of you guys been following me for a minute, you know I like to get down, you know, and make them roux. Love making gumbo or anything that takes any type of roux, gravy, anything like that, that's my thing, right? So, obviously, we gotta start with oil. Not butter, but we starting with the oil, right? So, once this heats up, then we go ahead and add our flour. And after that, we're gonna do our seasoning. Now I'm gonna show you this part. Come on in here and look at this. I set it up, the oil was here. Oil, flour, then my seasoning, right? And then my tomato paste. See how I got it set up? If you guys are like, you wanna get it streamlined in the kitchen, then that's how you do it. And that's how I do it for myself. All my ingredients, line them out, and then I go from there. Now, we're getting ready to grab our whisk. And by the way, listen, anything, any of the material or anything that I use on my channel, you guys take a look at my Amazon store. I keep everything in there. If you guys ever want to like, you know, pick up a little bit of something, you know what I mean? I'll be having them tools that just keep your life simple, right? So now we just start adding this. And when I say this, I mean, we start adding, you know, our flour, right? We want to cook that flour taste out of here. Okay, so look, we're not cooking to put no color on it, anything like that. Like I said earlier, look, what we're doing is we just want to cook that flour taste out of that, right? So now we start adding our seasoning. This combination that you put in here right now, it's going to have that little Mexican smell to it. You know, have that Mexican vibe to it. Now notice I kept it moving, right? We don't want to burn nothing or nothing like that, right? So now I'm getting ready to come with my paste. I put that in there because you want it to be hot because you want it to go ahead and, you know, to melt, you know, and to mix in also. Now I reduced my heat. I went down just a little bit under medium. It's more like a, a medium low right now. You know what I mean? Once I get it like this, and I get that to like just break up, then I come with my broth. Here we go. Or your stop, right? Just add a little bit to it. I know some of you guys like to just pour everything in there. But you know, I do everything a little bit at a time. You know what I mean? It doesn't cool off the pot as quick. But I want you to take a look at that. And you'll start seeing the color come in. This is where we're gonna get that flavor from, folks. Now, I can tell you this too. For those of you guys that keep enchilada sauce like in your cupboard or your, can your pantry, you can go ahead and use that. The store-bought works too. But try this out and tell me what you think down in that comment section below. Now I'm getting ready to set my fire. I want to bring it up to a boil, then we're going to reduce to a simmer, right? We're just going to keep it, watch it. We're going to let it thicken up. And we probably, it only takes about like at a medium flame. I mean, at a simmer, I'd usually simmer it for about, I don't know, about eight to 10 minutes. 
You know what I mean? We don't want it like super thick because when we put it in the oven, it's still gonna continue to, you know, thicken up. Because remember, we had that, that base, that oil and flour. Okay, so, you know, while we bringing this up to a boil, I just want to say this part right here. You guys might not be able to see because of my carousel right here, my seasonings, but I always keep myself some hot, soapy water at all times, right? That way I can wash dishes as I go. By the time this is over with and comes out, or even before it actually goes in that oven, I'll be done. And you heard that right there, the oven is ready. You know what? Look, we just simmered this, this is nice, but I want to show you something. You see that right there? That's a bay leaf. I forgot to show you guys that. You want to put the bay leaf in there? Listen, I can smell the bay leaf right when I pull it up right there. Mm, coming off at the top. So, my time, I turned it off. You guys can see the thickness. You know what I mean? Uh, look at that right there. Look at how it coats the spoon. Look, I'll do it again. That right there is good. That's exactly 10 minutes, right? So, I'll set this off to the side now. Now we're gonna go ahead and shred. Now this has had time to cool, you know, cause you guys saw me when I took it out. So look, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this and all I'm gonna do is shred it. Okay, so look, come on in here and take a look at this. You see right here? Look, I shredded it down. That's perfect for what I'm doing, right? Now you wanna get yourself a casserole with this. You know what I mean? I'm using a 13 by nine. I just spray the bottom. Now I'm getting ready to go ahead and you know show you guys how I do them. Now look, this is more of like a, an American way. I gotta say that, listen, this is just not the way that traditional, you know, Spanish people that do enchiladas, they do them. But look, this is all I'm gonna do. Now, this had a little time to, you know, cool a little bit. You can see the thickness again. Look at that. What I'm doing is, I'm gonna leave the bay leaf in there. I just love the flavor, right? So, we'll take one of these. Right? Now listen, I know I'm not dipping it in there and then frying it a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just take one. This is the one that's been sitting on the top. I'm gonna take this one, right? We'll just put that down. I'm gonna add a little sauce, you know, right here down the middle, just like that, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit some of this chicken. Just put it in here like this. It's up to you how much you wanna do. And you know, and then take a little cheese and just put a little cheese in here like that. Now, I'm gonna just take it and I'm just gonna roll it, right? And then when I get done, we spray the bottom, that's fine, just like that. Now, look, I went ahead and reheated up you know, the rest of my enchilada sauce, right? So now I'm just gonna go ahead and just pour this right over the top like this. You know what I mean? Because we want to get some, you know, everywhere. And then you'll notice mine is starting to split. That's because they dry out as they turn like that and then they'll just, you know, do their thing. You know what I mean? But if you cook them down in the beginning, you know what I mean? Uh, then you won't have that issue. You know what I mean? Meaning, take some, put them in there and then just kind of like fry them a little bit but not really fry them. You just want to like warm them up. You want to get them a little bit on the pliable side. And then for the best part of it all, because we all know enchiladas take what? And that's cheese. Now for me, I could just, you know, move some of this around like this, right? Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I like to put olives in mine, you know what I mean? But I thought on this video, this particular video, since I made the sauce, I'll just keep it kind of like close to the OG as possible, right? Now we come with the cheese. Our oven is already, you know, preheated. Look at this right here. Now you see why it doesn't make that big of a difference whether they split or not. Because to be honest with you, once this cheese melts over the top, and then the edges right here, they kind of like crisp up a little bit. And this right here is what makes the enchilada the enchilada. Damn, folks. Now look, I'm gonna ask a question before I put this inside of the oven, right? Let me know down in the comment section below. If I'm only putting it in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes, now you guys know, 20 minutes, is that gonna be uncovered or covered? Let's think. I know some of y'all gonna answer this after you didn't watch this whole video, but look, the answer is uncovered. 20 minutes, we wanna get, you know, melted, and we wanna just, burn, you know, crisp up the little edges on it. Okay, folks, it ain't nothing uh, 
else to do but to taste it. I can tell you, I got me a little taste of it right now, and I taste the enchilada sauce. We all know what the corn tortilla tastes like. You know, it's nice, soggy, you got the cheese. Now to hit it all together, you know, I don't let it cool, right? Cool enough, we're not trying to ruin the, the weekend. All right, so I'm gonna do it like this, folks. That's it right there. I better stop before I go to town on these right here. Now, let me just tell you some of the things that you can do to like level it up, you know, or just make it personal for what you're doing, right? And I gave you a great base to stand alone by itself. This right here is fire. Listen, you got a family of, uh, I'm gonna say you got a family of four because everybody gonna get about three a piece. You know what I mean? And maybe somebody can take something to work the next day. You know what I mean? I say double the recipe, cook it, put a couple of these casserole dishes in there, and then you got some good leftovers, and they warm up great, right? So what we can do is we can put sour cream over the top, cortija cheese uh, in the inside. You know, sprinkle anything you want to when it comes on the outside. If you want to dress it up, make it look pretty, you can hit it with a little parsley or something like that. Uh, it's just so many things. And if you guys see my last enchilada video, look, I did something like a Tex-Mex type of version. You know, I did it with the black beans. You can put some onions in there. You can just like customize it like you want. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me just take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out here, listen, there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And you know how I like to get down. Food in my hand, I'm out. Peace. Thank you.